Before I start my 10 print review and before you stop watching this video, be sure to check out the video bonus segments near the end of this video. They are worth it. 10 print is an abbreviation of the actual name of this book, which when is fully expanded is a 38 byte long single line of basic program code which randomly prints one of two slanted characters within an endless loop. The resulting output resembles sort of a complex maze. This program and its output are the focus of the many deep dives taken in this book. This book falls into the software studies series, as did the book I recently reviewed, Racing the Beam. The book was written by 10 authors slash academians, using a collaborative effort to come up with the ideas that would need to be expanded upon in order to create a book. All proceeds collected from this book are being donated to a nonprofit. On page 16, the book states the goal of the book is to plumb the depths of cultural, computational, and historical depth of Timprint. When I first heard about this book, I have to admit I was intrigued. How could it be possible to write an entire book based on one line of code? A short one-liner at that. Never underestimate the power and willingness of a team of dedicated authors' ability to innovate and create a story where none was previously imagined. The book was written in an academic sort of format. I did have to look up some of the words they used, terms like culturomics, unicursal, vertiginous, quixotic, pedagogical, elucidate. I feel so illiterate right now. They covered nearly every possible angle that could be covered, even stating, for example, on page 37, Tin print retains a dimension of spiritual mystery. The book is arranged into 20 chapters with the table of contents resembling a basic program, some even including the abbreviation REM, which is a remark or comment statement in basic. These chapters, the ones starting with REM, contain discussions of programs or ports related to the tin print program. In the early parts of the book, they dove deep into the artistic qualities of the generated maze output. Page 66 detailed some of the possible comparisons of the output of Tim Print, comparing them to mazes, stitching, sewing and weaving, intersection of design craft, art and computation, generative qualities of repetition. The first half of the book contains a lot of detailed discussions on artistry, regularity, and randomness, and how variations of the program can be compared and contrasted to modern art pieces. They also do the best they can to break down the program into its various components explaining the mechanics of the Tim Print program for those of us that are unfamiliar with basic programming processes. I actually really liked the second half of the book. They had a reference to the movie Tron on page 139 and explained the Commodore 64 random function in great detail on page 144. In the basic chapter, page 181, I learned something fascinating. Commodore paid Microsoft a paltry $25,000 to include basic on all Commodore 64s. Isn't that amazing? There was a terrific chapter on the Atari VCS port of Timprint. On page 196, they explain, Unlike the Apple II and the PET, the Atari had no onboard ROM and no operating system, and only a fraction of the RAM of those other 1977 computers. As a result, Atari programmers had to write code that manipulated the TIA's registers, not merely on a screen-by-screen -screen basis, but on every single scan line of the television display. As a result, the shortest optimized assembler version on the VCS was a whopping 360 characters long. After looking everywhere I could fathom on the internet, I came up empty trying to find the ROM or source for the VCS version. However, I shot off an email to two of the book's authors, Nick Monfort and Ian Bogus. Ian graciously provided me with both files, which I'll have a link to in the notes of this video. Stick around for the video bonus at the end for more on this. In the Commodore 64 chapter, page 213, I was reminded the Commodore character set is physically printed on the computer's keyboard on the front side of each key, a detail I had forgotten about. Also interesting, on page 229, they explain the real reason for the large border surrounding the Commodore 64 was to support all the various CRT monitors and televisions that were out at the time, with their varying viewports. They went on to cover porting the C64 version of Timprint into assembly language. I was surprised to learn their port to assembly was only 22 bytes long as opposed to 38 for the basic version. I would have thought the assembler version of the program would have been much bigger than the basic version. This was due mostly to the fact there are built-in kernel routines and video ROM on the C64. The chapter preceding the conclusion covers the subject of walking the maze, that is, trying to find some sort of solution to Timprint. This begs the question, how do you find a solution to a program that never ends? Even if you end the program after one screen, what constitutes a valid solution? 
What they decided was to define one solution for a fixed size as being able to navigate from one side of the maze to the other. They wrote and documented a basic program to do just that. They also included a version of the program that would allow the user to navigate the maze through the use of the arrow keys. All nice touches. Stick around for the video bonus for more on that. There is quite a bit that can be learned from the Tim Print book. Diving into every aspect of one line of code imaginable, for example, spiritualism, artistry, history of computing in general, history of the Commodore and the basic programming language, assembly language, and the list goes on and on. I think it takes a lot of moxie to write a book about one line of basic code. There are tons of helpful illustrations and photographs. They include several short stories or segues that are highlighted with a light blue background. All nice touches. I would say this book is mostly targeted to a technical audience. A PDF version of the book is available to download for free on temprint.org under a Creative Commons license. Alternately, you can purchase the hardcover or paperback on Amazon.com for about $27 and $20 respectively. The digital Kindle format is also available for $14. If you want to know everything there is to know about a single concise line of code on the Commodore 64, then this book is for you. This is a really masterfully done book, and I highly recommend it. While conducting the research for this video, I came across this website, which contains the Tim Print Companion Disc, and you can go over to that website, and there's a download link. And once you do that, you pop in. You can uh, use a variety of different methods of uh, looking at the programs that are on the disc. But I happen to prefer DIR Master, which I'm uh, using 3.11. And what that allows you to do is explore the disk outside of actually using it on the Commodore 64. And you can look at all the programs on there. And then you can either double click to look at the actual program, or you can right click and run them in your emulator of choice. And this is very useful, so I don't have to rekey in all the information or all the programs from the book. And there's a lot of different versions of the various programs and software that's included in the Tim Print book. So I highly recommend you check out this uh, companion disc. It's it's really terrific. There's a there's a note program on here that runs. Let's run that real quick. and explains, it's like a little uh, demo scene crack screen. You'll notice it includes a short description and, a, and the title of each program. So it's really, really useful. It's really cool. So yeah, check that out and you won't be disappointed. As I had mentioned earlier in the video, I had was looking all over for the Atari VCS version on the internet of the Tim Print. And the, the uh, book's authors were kind enough to share with me uh, this source code and the ROM image. And I wanted to show you that real quickly. Uh, this is all 360 bytes of the program code, which is quite a bit. And you can look at that. I'll have a link in my notes with these two files. And I have the Stim Stella emulator loaded. And at first when you run it, I thought, what's wrong with this thing? But you have to press F2 or the game reset in order to activate the program. And so that's 10 print running and under St Stella emulator. And I copied the ROM over to my Harmony cartridge and checked it out on an actual Atari 2600, and it works just like this. So I thought I would share that with you, and I was excited to get my hands on, on, the, on these two files. And finally, I wanted to point out that Warren Robinette, the programmer and creator of the Atari 2600 game Adventure, is, is releasing an ebook later this year. And let, let me read from his website. The ebook Annotated Adventure, a detailed analysis of the source code for the video game adventure for the Atari 2600 console, will be posted on this page sometime in 2016. 
If you'd like to be notified when it is ready, please send an email at warren at Robin, warrenrobinette.com with the word annotated in the subject line. So if you uh, send uh, Warren an email, he will notify you when the ebook will be ready. If you can't get enough of Warren Robinette in the, in the meantime, check out his one hour presentation at the Game Developer Conference in San Francisco last year. It's one hour and it was terrific.